the fish for fish and affliction. Hello. Well, mom and dad's grab the kids. It's time for the fishing show. Me and old Rusty's gonna go catch them down at the fishing hole. Well, you better stick around, cause you don't know what you're missing. Yeah, me and old Rusty's got that fishing affliction. Grab your hats, grab your baits, don't forget your poles. We're gonna fire up that old nitro boat and head to the fishing hole. We're gonna try to catch a big one. Yeah, that's what we're wishing. Cause me and old Rusty's got that fish in affliction. Yeah, me and old Rusty's got that fish in affliction. Yeah. Man, and we've got it bad. Just like me. Here, fishy, fishy, here, fishy, fishy, here. Well, rise and shine, it's Fish and Affliction time, and thank you for joining us this morning time on Fish and Affliction. It is a little before 3 a.m. this morning time, and the big dog and I also wanted to wish my Aunt Pam a happy belated birthday. I've got such a supportive, loving family, and my Aunt Pam is the epitome of that. And I sure do love you, Aunt Pam. Happy belated birthday from us. And yes, folks, Mama's Big Lunch Bag is in the truck today. Every week we get tons of emails of people asking, is Mama's Big Lunch Bag in the boat? And what's in Mama's Big Lunch Bag? And can I come eat Mama's Big Lunch Bag? It looks like we're gonna have to have a Mama's Big Lunch Bag giveaway or something. But nonetheless, yes, it's in the boat. Aunt Pam, happy belated birthday. I'm on my way to pick up the big dog so we can get down to Nick and Jack and do a little smallmouth and some spotted bass fishing. So, next step, let's go pick the big dog up. Let's see. Two bags for me, no bags for you. I think very nice, man, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> well, listen, until you get me down to where these smallmouth are at and these big spotted bass, then maybe I'll relinquish my, one of Mama's uh, big lunch bag sandwiches. Where are we headed this morning, time to go? We are headed for Nickajack, and it's been a while since I fished in Nickajack, but 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 we are fishing with a guy down there. They say is one of the best spot fishermen there are. So we're going to see, and of course it's starting to rain. It's about oh, 49, 50 degrees, and almost to the end of April, and. We wouldn't expect anything else but nasty weather because we live in the state of Tennessee. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining because as long as I'm fishing, I'm in a good mood. Well, I hope your cameraman skills are boned up today because when it comes to spotted bass and smallmouth, it's called Passion of Dan. Well, let me put it this way. My cameraman skills are not that good. But <laughs> and they're not gonna I improve? Am I am trying to improve them. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. All right, maybe I'll give you one of these sandwiches. Okay. Well, after bribing the big dog with some of Mama's big old lunch bag sandwiches, it was time to hit the headwaters of Nick Jack with Affliction Pro staffer, Charles Sullivan, in pursuit of big smallmouth and spots. Well, time to try to catch these big old giant smallmouth and maybe a few spots. Charles caught him yesterday, he had 14, so we're gonna see, see what happens today. All of them caught in the back of the boat. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just think like that. Just, hey, watch this. Let me tell you what I'm doing right off the bat. I'm putting this up here today. You don't see me do that a lot. Keep it I'm getting ready to catch me a six, seven pound smallmouth today and I want the net. Hey, you just have it handy for me. Look. And Charles. Let me show you one thing about this net. If you think you can't reach the fish, you can. <laughs> Listen, the only reason you came, because you were lost. You know that you didn't even know where we were supposed to be today, did you? I'm All you are, the net man for I'm Charles and I. That's it. Supposed to be. <laughs> Just grab the net for us. Folks, I want to tell you something. What a thrill it is to fish with a fishing legend, Mr. Charles Sullivan. In these parts, Charles is known as the old man of the river. You see, he's been fishing these parts of the Nickajack for over 50 years, and he knows just about every inch of that body of water. He knows where those big fish are, those big spotted bass, those big smallmouth, and those big largemouth. Ah, oh, what a fish. 
this is a giant here. I thought that was a big small mountain when she first come up. I thought she was too. You know what? What? Well, that one wanted that thing. Yeah, it wanted it. They want them jigs, but that's a pretty fish. That's a good looking large mountain. Look at <laughs> Now that one, eat that bitchy bug now. That one eat that bitchy bug. They love them things down here, buddy. Woo! Hey, now that's a good one to start out the morning yeah. with. You reckon? Good, good solid five pounder for about 15 minutes here give it to me i'll put him in the well well we're off to a good start with the old man of the river that's right a big old large mouth in just 15 minutes man that is awesome we'll be back in just a minute but here's a picture tribute from in the wild your pictures in the wild folks both rusty and myself and the rest of us here at fish and affliction would like to send our prayers and love to the Smith family for their loss of Mr. Patrick Lee Smith. Patrick was known as quite a fisherman amongst his fishing buddies. Here is a picture of him and his fishing partner, Mark Pfaff, and here is a picture of Patrick holding up his first place trophy from the LBL division on Kentucky and Barkley Lake in 2002. That's quite a trophy and quite a grin from this wonderful man and I'd like to thank the Smith family for taking the time to share these memories with us and we'll be praying for God's blessings and comfort for his mom Kathy and the rest of the family during this time. Kind of, kind of like this all over like that. Yeah, maybe kind of like if you kind of steady and if you pop it a little bit. you know, There's no way I'm going to do that. I believe it's like this. Yeah, it's kind of like this. It's like this. Then it's going like this. No way. Kind of like this. <laughs> the sexy swimmer, it's got action you can't believe until you see it. I'm kind of liking this. Here's a preview of the coming chapter in the summer of 2010. Our first annual bass tournament will be held May 15th with fishermen from eight states in competition for a guaranteed $5,000 cash first prize. The tournament is expecting 250 angler teams. Professional anglers to father and son teams will compete in one of the largest open tournaments in the history of Old Hickory Lake. Our entry fee is no more than your local Tuesday night tournament, just $80 a boat. Budweiser, Robert Orsisco, Riverside Marine, and Anderson Marine have joined in with Blackjack Cove in presenting this incredible tournament event. 94% of fishermen hunt. 100% hunt big game. There is only one solution. Scotty Green Adventures. Hunting the world. Welcome to Scotty Green Adventures. You pick your species you'd like to harvest and contact Scotty Green Adventures for your adventure of a lifetime. For hunters only, brought to you by Scotty Green Adventures, hunting the world. Check out all the great hunts at scottygreenadventures.com. Well, last week, David roosted the birds for Affliction Pro Staffer Catfish. And this week, Catfish returns the favor to his dad. And David is doing a little tree calling in hopes of fooling those gobblers into thinking that he's a hen and pinpointing his position. Now after that turkey answered, David and Catfish were able to locate that gobbler strutting on a limb. Now David did a little more tree calling and that gobbler hammered. Well, so far so good. Now all we need now is for this bird to pitch down and come on into the setup. You never know what these turkeys are gonna do, but this bird is heading in the right direction. Well, David's got him coming, but now he's going to coax him a little closer. Hey, 
Well, how's this for close? This bird is right there, but he needs to come just a little bit further for David to get him in his sights. I got it. Yeah. Folks, there's a lot that goes into this turkey hunting, and there's so much to know, and these two men know how to do it, and do it well. Early April. Catfish roosted this bird yesterday. We got in here this morning before daylight. A few little soft calls. And here he comes. Well, congratulations to Affliction Pro Staffer Catfish and his father David for a great Tennessee turkey hunt. And now, back to fishing Affliction. While Rusty and Charles are enjoying this beautiful sunrise, let's talk about the Bass Pro Shop gear list that we use today. First, our 7-foot medium-heavy Kistler rods spooled with Bass Pro Shop monofilament. Next, our Strike King baits. We threw a variety of baits today, but the main one was the Itsy Bitsy Bass Jig 316 of an ounce, and the Big Dog was working a KVD spinner bait the first thing in the morning along this riprap and catching good spotted bass. He's, bad. he's got turbo, don't he? That's, that's so a keeper pretty. spot, but it's a little spot. But yeah, he's anyway, fine. look at the color on that spot. That's a good looking spot right there. Well, that ain't the biggest one we're going to no, 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 catch that either. I don't know, they're all so strong, it's hard for me to tell. They've all been out fighting this current so much. Pretty good fish. Look at that big, mm. oh. that's a pretty solid spot right there. Pretty solid spot right there now. He come off right there at the boat, but he's a pretty solid one. Charles, we supposed to bring him in the boat? Yeah. I, I thought that's what we supposed to do. Well, you know, I will tell you this. They don't count if you don't touch them. <laughs> both, both the last two had the trailer hook, I will tell you that. Both the last two had the trailer hook. But now I'm gonna tell you as soon as that one hit the that spinner bait hit the hit the water, that one had it. Good small mouth. That's small mouth there. Yeah. Good small mouth. He's a small one, but he's pretty. Good solid. <laughs> you know, that fish did not have the hook in her. Didn't she have had the, hook the in it. she had the the jig bridged in her mouth sideways and did yeah. not have the hook in her. Good solid small mouth. Now, that's a good solid fish, but that is not a keeper fish. It's no. got to be 18 inches. So, and that's the reason for the limit where you can catch them like this. And then they're fun to catch, but we're gonna let this one go. Well, the old man of the river's got his first smallmouth of the day and a big old smile. And he's gonna give me a bait to help me catch one. Right right is, is this guaranteed? Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm gonna put it on. Here it is, fish. Oh, he's got him. Oh, man. That's oh, good. big dog. Now, folks, you can't help but think big smallmouth or big spotted bass when you're on these kind of waters that hold those big fish. But big largemouth that live in that swift current in a the river, they can sure get acrobatic just like a big spotted bass or a big smallmouth. We just got smallmouth and spotted bass fever. That large, man. Uh, is it? Or it's a big, big spot, spot isn't it? Big largemouth. That's a big spotted bass. Isn't it? No, it's large mouth. Is it? Large mouth? Yeah. Well, they all fight hard, don't they? Shoot, man. I tell you what, I'm so geared today. <laughs> I'm like I'm on jet fuel, man, because I'm expecting to hang one of these big spots. And daggum, you know, when I start fussing about catching large mouth this size, I'm in bad shape. But that's a good solid large mouth. Keep the size? We might go ahead and box that one. That's a good spot right there. That's a good spot. Good spot. Real good spot. He worked on that spinner bait some, didn't he? 
Now folks, I'm not in the boat for this clip right here because we're right near the boat ramp and I went back up to go put some of the clothes that I had on away so it wouldn't take up so much space in the boat. So this is the big dog running the camera. And my compliments to the big dog. He did very well keeping it on Charles. Folks, as you can see, it's sunny right now, but the wind is starting to blow. And the reason is because there is a big front coming through that we're going to get hit with in just a few minutes after this video is taken. And throughout the rest of this trip, we had weather come in and leave us four different times and it would go from sunny to absolute monsoon weather and then back to sunny again and just repeat the process. But during this time, we kept at it, we kept the baits in the water, we kept fishing hard. When you got that fishing affliction, you just got to keep on doing it and there's no doubt about it that the old man in the river is with you every cast of the way. Welcome to my world, and people think this is easy. Nice 50 something degree weather, 25 mile an hour wind, heavy current, line breaking stripers. Welcome to my world. Folks, I don't know about you, but I need a break from this weather on Nickajack for just a minute. No better time than to go see what Miss Vic has got cooking. In the Skillet with Chef Vicki Porter is brought to you by Cleepy.com, turning your precious memories into video treasures. Welcome to In the Skillet. I'm Vicki Porter and today I will be making for you my green bean casserole. This is one of my family's favorite dishes. And now for the ingredients. You will need two 28 ounce cans of green beans, garlic salt, one 16 ounce carton of sour cream, one can of cream of mushroom soup, eight ounces of cheddar cheese, one bag of sliced almonds, and Italian breadcrumbs. First, cook your green beans the way that you like them. Once your green beans have cooked, layer them on the bottom of a casserole dish. Next, sprinkle with garlic salt. Layer the sliced almonds over the beans. Next, layer on the cheddar cheese. Next, in a separate bowl, mix together the sour cream and the cream of mushroom soup. Once you have the soup and the sour cream mixed together, then pour it on top of the green beans. Last, top it off with the Italian breadcrumbs. Bake this in the oven at 375 for 30 minutes. The next time you have a family gathering, try making the green bean casserole. It's sure to be a hit. You can find this recipe on fishinaffliction.com. I'm Vicki Porter. Tune in next week to see what's cooking in the skillet. Hey, what do you think about these? Shaw Grigsby likes these, but Denny Brower looks awesome in these. You know, a lot of people don't know that Strike King is the number one importer of packaged polarized sunglasses in the whole entire country. I've seen Mark Davis wear these, and I like them a lot. They're awesome. But you know what? Me, I have got to have my monsters. Folks, the Fish and Affliction Featured Business of the Week is Pony Mailbox and Business Center, located in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Mr. Jason Trotter and all the fine folks there at Pony Mailbox and Business Center sure know how to take care of all your mailing needs, all your packaging needs, just anything that you need to send anywhere in the world, they've got it covered and they know how to take care of their customers. I've been a customer of Pony Mailbox and Business Center for many, many, many years and I sincerely appreciate their efforts and their expertise in taking care of your shipping needs. Now folks, the Fish and Affliction Featured Business of the Week is not a paid sponsorship. It is the Fish and Affliction way of saying thank you to these fine folks that provide a great service and a great product. So once again, thank you to Pony Mailbox and Business Center in Hendersonville, Tennessee and Mr. Jason Trotter for being our Fish and Affliction Featured Business of the Week.
Well, a little large mouth. You know, I'm thinking, you know, I think I'm having several of them little ones tick my blade or else I'm having some big. That's one thing when you're working this spinner bait, you need to really concentrate on the blade because you can feel the revolution of the blade and if it ticks or it misses, it's either because there's shad getting on it or another fish is trying to get it. You want to make that, that, that same cast back in there again, sometimes three or four times. But you don't want to throw it over near one of them right there because that sucker right there will eat it too. Folks, I know this is hard to believe that it's the same day after that weather I showed you right before that last commercial, but I promise you it is. And we just kept on fishing no matter what. And when you're fishing a river system, you never know what your next bite is going to be. But no matter what it is, it's always fun to get one. This is a big fish. <laughs> It may not even be a bass. Oh man, you got a whopper on. This is a big fish, whatever it is. It ain't no bass, I don't think. I do not think it's a bass, but I, if it is, it's a big large mouth. I mean a big one. Standing in one little spot, ain't it a big dog? It's a big drum. Is it? Big drum. Big, big drum. Yeah. Big drum, big dog. I mean a big drum. Well, folks, the reputation of the drum gets a bad rap. But as far as I'm concerned, it's another great fish to catch in the water. They get absolutely giant in some places of Tennessee. And where we're fishing, down here on the Nickajack, there are some absolute monsters. And through the course of our day on the water with Charles, the big dog hooked into several of these fish, of course not knowing that they were drum, and his excitement level was through the roof thinking that he had a monster largemouth or smallmouth or even a spotted bass on. And folks, isn't that what it's all about? Just enjoying a great opportunity out on the water, not knowing what you're going to catch and appreciating everything that you're able to catch. What an awesome, awesome fish. That is just a big fish, and I don't care what kind of fish it is and I'd be happy to hook into a bunch of those every single time that I went out. And there's one thing for sure, the old man in the river knows where they live. That's a good drum fisherman right there. I can take you right over here on that bank with that black and blue jig, catch him weight 20, 30, oh. 40 pounds. I mean, fat. Big. <laughs> well, as you can see, Charles knows exactly where those big drum live, and he knows where those big largemouth live, too. Big largemouth. Yep, there's a good large man. Good. Well, not as big as yours, Charles, but not a slouch. I want to tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> that jig right there has been a good jig. That rage crawl. But that's a that's the football jig, and we catch a lot of fish on that thing in the summer, buddy. There's another good solid fish. Charles, I'm having fun with you today, buddy. Hey, <laughs> we ain't been out here a couple hours, guys. I mean, it looks like we've been out here forever, but we ain't been out here long. Y'all stop talking so I can go catch them. Yeah. That's a second time that one hit, or else it was two of them. Now, I don't think... Now, this one ain't no big one, Charles. It ain't no big one. I'll get him. Good fish. He ain't no big one. He's a pretty solid fish, but he ain't no giant. You know, he's... But he just, I don't know if that's the same fish or not, but I had a bite in there. I'm going to throw back in there, and I'm going to throw, throw this football jig back in there. Got one of my crawls, one of my claws off my crawl. I don't care, I'm throwing it in there anyway. I've seen crawfish with one claw before. We'll see if he'll hit it. He's a gar. And I mean a big old gar, too. That gum are eating my pinchers. <laughs> Them guards are eating my rage crawl pinchers. I don't like that. Well, the big dog doesn't like those gar eating those pinchers. <laughs> the one thing that we both enjoy is spending time with Charles Sullivan, the old man of the river. 
Folks, how many times have you been able to sit with somebody that has fished a body of water for over 50 years and has made millions and millions of casts with these hands, these hands that have grabbed gigantic smallmouth and spotted bass and just everything that swims in the water. There's so much to learn from a man like this. There's just so much that he passes on just by being in his presence and he can still catch it. Well, folks, as you can see, Charles has got a good smallmouth on. I'm going to turn the volume down just a little bit because we are at an industrial part of the Nickajack that there is a lot of metal salvage being done right here, and they dump it into this barge that we're fishing next to. And what Charles has done, he's thrown that itsy bitsy out there on the edge of that little drop right there into the current, and this smallmouth has hit it. Now on the Nick Jack, small mouth have to be 19 inches long and you can only take one a day. So that makes this such a great small mouth fishery and the old man of the river has caught him another dandy. I mean, right 17 and a half. Big old small mouth, good job. Big old small mouth. And that's not a key to small mouth. <laughs> well, folks, we're having such a good time with Mr. Charles Sullivan, the old man of the river, down here on the Nickajack. And next week, I'm going to show you the rest of the fish that we caught with Mr. Charles Sullivan. And it's just a great opportunity to spend more time with the old man of the river. I sure enjoyed my time with him. The big dog did too. And I can't wait for you to see next week's episode. So be sure to tune in to Fish and Affliction next week when we're back with Mr. Charles Sullivan and we'll hear the old man of the river say, What you up to? A boiled egg. <laughs> Caught you with a boiled egg. We can't catch no fish, we gotta eat eggs. <laughs> Fish and Affliction is brought to you by Strike King Lures, Deca Batteries, Kistler Rods, and Bass Pro Shops. Thanks for tuning in this week, and please join us again next week because... Yeah, me and old Rusty's got that Fish and Affliction. Grab your hats, grab your base, don't forget your poles. We're gonna fire up that old nitro boat and head to the fishing home. We're gonna try to catch a big one. Yeah, that's what we're wishing Cause me and old Rusty's got that fish in affliction Yeah, me and old Rusty's got that fish in affliction yeah. Man, and we've got it bad